Okay, well, welcome to Acuity's Lunch and Learn. This is on NX Sheet Metal, and today we're going to look at some of the new features of NX 8.5. I have with me today Doug Dingus. Hello, everyone. And this is Pat Kennedy. And today we're going to be looking at a CAN demo that was created for us by Siemens of what's new in NX Sheet Metal 8.5. And Doug and I are just going to have a little uh, back and forth conversation about what we see in this, um, in this demo. So let me go ahead and get that started. Okay, so first off, what we get to see is the fact that this, um, this demo does not use your basic user interface, that they're working completely in the Full screen yeah, I mode. see the full screen mode there. It gives you a lot of room. Um, one of the things that he has here set up is an assembly that is um, electronic, um, high-tech electronics assembly. There's a number of sheet metal parts and an enclosure in the middle, or not enclosure, but just a volume in the middle. He's going to start uh, visual reporting, and he's got a couple of reports here. Now let me pause this for a moment. And this is HD3D. This is where you can record things. You can get reports by status, by condition, and that's where we're headed with this. Yes, and in fact, he's actually made a couple of custom reports, which is actually very easy to do. What he did ahead of time, though, is create a part attribute in each of these parts. And now he's, he's created, has created a report based on that attribute. Use those attributes. So you. It's set up ahead of time. All he has to do is activate it. And here are the results, just that quick. Which so, attribute is it? Do we know? Well, we get to see right here in the, in the lower section where it says part type equals. Ah. All right, there's three that he set as HTE, high tech electronics, two that are sheet metal, and one that's a standard fastener. Very cool. So, the next thing he's, you know, he, he's just kind of selecting through so you can see it, that it color codes as he picks each type. And then he removes those and see he also has one called parametric status. So when he runs that, now we see parametric yes or no. Now that's very similar to what we can also do in Checkmate. So in fact, now we get to see where you would do kind of that normal Checkmate Yeah, the same thing. thing you'd normally do in Checkmate. Except he's actually doing it through HD3D. Using a simple attribute. Mm -hmm. So here, you know, he's going through and, and picking, you know, the uh, unparameterized feature, check. Here he's running it. What's different here, though, is the results. We actually get those red X's overlaid on the graphics screen, and we get the thumbnails across the top. So we've got unparameterized sheet metal parts here to work with. Yeah. And one of the nice things about it also, of course, by using the HD3D, is you get all of this extra little information that, you know, here he expanded out the details so you can see, you know, when the test was run, who ran it, and what the test parameters were. All of mm -hmm. that is just for free out of the box when you use the HD3D tools with Checkmate. Excellent. Excellent. That's good stuff. So we'll continue on. And he's just going to uh, kind of go through, and we can see that there's really only one sheet metal part in here that is actually parameterized. Everything else is dumb parts. So in reality, it, this is like an assembly where everything came in, or practically everything came in, is a step. Yeah, you, know, you could find out whether or not, say, another vendor had drawn it, and you want to know what your potential chain status might be. Yeah. You could jump into that report and know what you've got to do and what you don't have to do. So let's stop here for a second. All right, we've we've zoomed in on on this one part, and this is one of those dumb solids, and we're going to have to turn that into a sheet metal part. Yep. All right, and we're going to have to uh, make some minor changes to it. So he's going to. Uh, take a couple of measurements to uh, kind of drive home a point there. There's a half millimeter uh, wall thickness there, but then go and check this other wall thickness and you can notice it's thicker. Yeah, 750. Yeah. So uh, turning that into a, a sheet metal part can be a little bit of a challenge. Now here we have the new Convert to Sheet Metal Wizard. Now this is kind of slick. Let me stop it here as well. Notice on the on the left we have a very short, just three-step wizard, but it 
kind of leads you through some of the things that you would normally have to do when you're converting you know these dumb solids over to sheet metal a lot of times you'll have to do edge ripping or cleanup before you can successfully turn it to a, a a sheet metal part, yeah. and that's nice because it gives you a little process reminder. You're kind of ready to go. Let's just think about what we need to do on this thing, and he's going to need an edge rip for that one. Absolutely, because we have this closed loop that we need to be able to unfold, right? So we could pick an edge, or we can sketch something. In this case, he's going to sketch something. So let's go ahead and watch that. I'm going to pick that face and go from mid midpoint there down. So he's got his vertical line, finish the sketch, hit next, and, and there take it a look is, at it that. did it. It's, it's, it's there already, that quick. So let's stop again, and let me explain what's about to happen. Okay, at this point, all he's done is ripped the original solid. Next step, though, is the cleanup utility. You, you want to be able to use the cleanup utility to get the part into a consistent wall thickness. Yep. Sheet metal ready state, in other words. Exactly. This step in the wizard is going to allow us to do that, and notice that it even has the ability to pick a wall thickness. So he's going to select the base face. And that's and the face that it unfolds to. When this is all done, there'd be a T shape in the flat pattern there, with that face being the body of the T. Exactly. And there's our wall thickness there. Mm hmm which we could set to a different value. Yep. And notice how it's set to hide the original. It's actually going to create a separate body of a constant And there it thickness. is. You can see the edge rip and everything changed, and now we're at a half millimeter. Yep. That's quick. Not only that, but it is also now a parameterized part. Excellent. And in fact, to prove that, we're going to go ahead and create a flange down here at the bottom. Now I see he's got the little commands all customized on his mouse. <laughs> yes. Very cool. So you can see here he's going ahead and, and creating this flange directly off of off this part. It's no longer a dumb solid. It is a sheet metal part. So it's working just as if he had created it from scratch. In this case, creating just this, this little tab type of flange to to catch underneath the adjoining part. And so there it is. There's our completed sheet metal part from the dumb solid. Very nice. That's quick. That's a good workflow. Yeah. And, and then here he's going to unfold it for us, or unfold a bend at least. Yeah, he's, he's going to unfold the entire part. Which, you know, and there you go. That's always a good check because you always want to make sure that you're not unfolding two flanges and sharing the same piece of sheet metal. And unbend's always a good step. <laughs> yes. Although absolutely. on this part, it's it's not necessary. I mean, we kind of knew that it was a, a true sheet metal part when he added the flange. Yeah. But yep. this is proof. Yeah, this is definitely proof. So what do you think of that wizard so far? I think it's pretty clean. I think um, one of the areas in sheet metal we've seen people struggle with is the icons. You know, what do you do first? There's a lot of icons, there's different steps. It's not always obvious the order in which things need to happen. That's a pretty darn good improvement in my opinion. So let's stop here for a second. So now we've got th this other sheet metal part. Again, this is another dumb solid, but it has cons or consistent uh, wall thickness. So there's, there's really no ripping to do, anything like that. He's still going to use the wizard, but he's going to jump directly yeah, down to the right bottom step, it. pick that base face, and finish. And that's it. And now we've got sheet metal. That quick. Yeah. So now we need to go ahead and add a flange over on this far side. Easy enough to do, picking the existing edge. It's going to have to tweak that radius. Obviously, it's too large. And notice on the far right side there, We've got a little uh, corner issue we're going to have to deal with. Right? Going to have to add some relief in there. He's going to go ahead and, and get this so that it's yeah, it preserves the outer dimension of the box and drag it up to the top. And obviously, on any of these things, the drags are nice for the demo, but we could key in values, measure, set parameters, do all the usual things there if we wanted to. Oh, absolutely. So uh, the corner's about to be ripped here when he hits OK. 
or not ripped, but relief. Addict. Yep, the, look at that. That's a pretty big relief. Yeah, yeah. And and this, you know, this open corner now, he's going to want to add a closed corner feature on here. He's going to pick the two bends. And default is right now just set to rectangular close, so that's very quick and easy to do. Might as well go over and do the other side. Very quick. And just for grins, yeah, he's going to change this one so that the relief is open instead of closed. Okay, perfect. And there's a lot of other choices you can do as well. So cruising right along, you know, um, now this is an electronics enclosure, all right, so there's some heat to deal with. So what's he going to do next? Add a louver. Louvers. You bet. Now, louver's been there for a while, all right. This is not new for 8.5. But it's, it is a sheet metal feature that's used often, and it's quick and easy to do. And he wants more than one, but he's only going to actually draw in one. And we'll see why here in just a moment. Now, louvers are pretty quick and easy. You really just need a single line, and then you can define the rest of the louver through the feature parameters form. So he's going to type that in. Can you see the auto dimensioning the there? The one, the one value he keyed in turned blue. The other two are still floating. Oh, good point. Good point. And yeah, that's a good use of the auto dimensioning for simple features like this. It's really fast. It's not always worth ignoring that feature as much as we hate seeing all the dimensions pop up. This is what that feature is for. You know, a lot of people get frustrated with it because they see dimensions pop up and they think, "Oh, I don't want that dimension." They go to delete it. So they could add a different one. Yeah, and you can just place as, another one. As soon one. as they delete it, then it comes back. Well, people don't realize you need to just create what you want, and the one you don't yep. want will go away. All right, so here now, I just kind of didn't even <laughs> point out. Here we're in pattern feature, and he just picked that louver. Yeah, so he picked it as a feature. He didn't have to use that workaround we've had to use in the past of turning it into a group. Yep, yep. Right? No feature groups, none of that. Just pick it, and we're going to go for a pattern. Yeah, so let's continue on. And he's just going to go ahead and set that up, turning off symmetric, set up the... And I want to highlight a few things in this pattern dialog. This is an improvement, a very significant one, that can be seen as of some of the very last releases of NX 7.5 and certainly into NX 8, where the patterns now are associative. You've got feedback. You can see the little blocks that indicate where the pattern instances will be whole bunch of neat stuff here that was either unavailable or that had to be done as separate steps with a lot of workarounds. And there you can see the number of pattern elements. Mm -hmm. And now we've got the direction, no more using the WCS, you're just working geometry right off the part. And there's the preview right there showing, you know, the six louvers it appears. And uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I really appreciate the fact that when you pick a feature, it just automatically assumes that the plane of that feature is yep. the plane you're going to pattern upon. So now we're going to unbend, it seems. Yeah, because we have a, an additional feature we want to add to this part. We're going to place a dimple on it. Now a dimple is another kind of um, feature that we've been kind of, well, we've had it for a while, right? Nothing special about it except well, let's watch and see where he places it. Oh, look at that. Cross the bend. Yeah. That would get you in, in trouble, right? Yeah. In previous versions, yes. In previous versions, exactly. And there's a warning saying that it's intersecting with the inside bend. So he's going to have to modify that dimple parameter a little bit to get rid of that warning. Yeah, if you make the depth less than the um, inside, bend radius. Inside bend radius, yeah. Yeah. There it goes. Yeah. You've got to give it enough height for that to work. Now, this is a cool demo feature. I think the the press brake die to actually bend this is, is uh, an interesting discussion, but look at that. <laughs> well, what's, the next step is going to be even more impressive because he's going to rebend the part here, and that dimple is going to survive without any errors. Oh, look at that. Excellent. Not too shabby. No, that's a great feature. That, yeah. that could be a real good time saver. Yeah. So that part's looking pretty good. 
Uh, we have some other things um, that he's going to do on this assembly, though. That uh, feature patterning, of course, is uh, getting pretty robust. And yes. while we're talking about patterns and he's showing and hiding things, this is some of the material that we get for Siemens on new product release. So we're sharing early stuff with you in the hopes of uh, better understanding NX8.5. And in this case, notice he's, he's using the boundary definition. These are just some curves. Yeah, now this is a really cool feature because you've got the ability to fill a boundary and there's lots of little parameters, whether or not there's an overlap, how much it is, what the pattern directions are. And see even the preview is, is updating as he drags the arrow. And each one of those is the key point of the original feature. It doesn't have to be in the center. It can be anywhere, actually. It's just where the, the uh, uh, origin point was set. And there it is. Just that quick. And that's associated back to the cutout, obviously. If oh. we change the shape, it, it would alter that pattern. And you can suppress any of those holes. He didn't show that in the demo, but you're able to freely pick through those and get rid of one or two or a few if you need. That's true. Now let's let's. Uh, now let's we switched the work here. part where yeah, we had it now. Here, here's the assembly navigator. We've switched to a, a part that all it has in it is a sketch. Okay. Now you know this isn't a sketch demo. We we could have done this such that we actually did the sketch where we you know extracted edges from the adjoining part and extended them out. But mm -hmm. well, you know why to go all that trouble. Instead, we'll just, well, set it up ahead of time so that we can go beyond the sketch of, of just using the sketch to make the sheet metal part. So he's, he's simply going to create a, a tab base here just by picking those, you know, yep, connected. There's your base surface. Connected curves, absolutely. And you also notice there were some other curves as well in the sketch, right? So we're going to change to hidden line mode so that we can see those. He's going to use them to make this bead. There's some tangent curves. Yeah, there. there's a good example of using a sketch for more than one purpose, too. Yes. Yes. That's a real time saver. When I get to do that, I prefer to do that. There they are, beads. Yeah, shallow depth, nice size radius, add some stiffness to the part. He also has an edge he's going to show right there at the adjoining part where we want this part to bend. So he picks that edge. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's between parts in the assembly, by the way. Well, this this curve actually belongs to this part. Okay. Yes, it it was a Oh, he projected. brought it up from the other part. It okay. was projected from the other part okay. into this part. So okay, he brought it. it up. Okay. Now, notice there's another case where we're using you know, feature across like, the bend. Yes, exactly. Now the one caveat with this is just like with the uh, dimple, it has to be a cylindrical bend. Yeah. And that makes sense. So standard press brake bend is really what we're talking about here. So there you go. Excellent. There That's a good, there's some really good features in there. Nice overview. And uh, if you have any questions or feedback on what you saw, please email those to info at acuityinc.com. You can reference Doug and Pat's uh, sheet metal NX8.5 sheet metal overview or visit our website www.acuityinc.com. And for Doug Dingus, this is Pat Kennedy and we thank you very much for joining us on our Lunch and Learn and hope to have you back again later. Take care everyone.